is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Nice and sharp. Welcome to DBL. It is Friday. Yes. Feels good. Does it feel good? Is I don't think Friday I've heard Christmas? that in a couple more than a couple months, maybe three or four it months. It feels good. I you know, I'm going to start calling I you on Friday. That. Yes, I need it. Just Everyone good... does. Everyone does. Welcome. It's Friday, December 18th. I'm Tori here with Al and Erica, the beautiful Lindsay, joining us from home. It's Friday, Lindsay. How you feeling? With that Erica energy, I'm all good there now. I'm ready go. to go. Hey. It's hey. Hey. I can't do it well. All right, we have some really good news to continue this feeling about a coronavirus vaccine. First up, we got Vice President Mike Pence getting the Pfizer vaccine on live TV this morning to instill confidence that the shot is safe. He said he didn't feel a thing and called it a medical miracle. I think science had something to do with it. Meantime, Health and Human Services Secretary was on GMA saying he expects the FDA will grant emergency use authorization for the Moderna vaccine today. That'll become the nation's second vaccine to prevent COVID-19. So as we know, all of this can't come soon enough as the coronavirus crisis has seen record breaking death tolls this week. But here's something that might make you smile. Check out these healthcare workers in Boston. Shout out to Boston who are celebrating the arrival of the vaccines. I do my head talk, check my nails. Baby, how you feel? Head talk, check my nails. Baby, how you feel? Feeling good as hell. Baby, how you feel? <laughs> so I saw this yesterday on um, Oprah Magazine's Course, um, Insta. Instagram, and I was like, look at Blue Suit. Can we pull this up? So Blue Suit was he like, dance. I'm Justin Timberlake, so y'all stay in yeah. sync, okay? Look at this. He's like in administration, <laughs> and he's killing it. <laughs> that guy's amazing. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of doctors. I was pre-med, so a lot of my friends finished and didn't go into stand-up comedy. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm sitting here thinking about my buddy Audley, who's a surgeon. He is a world-class dancer. He's Jamaican, so he can dance any kind of music. And it's so weird. It's Remember the doctors we saw that could sing, uh, the one that sang at the piano? Oh, yeah. 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 Like, it's so interesting. It seems like a lot of doctors also have this weird performative nature to them, too. I don't know. It's just a weird thing. Surgeons, especially because they surgeons have to have a very high confidence. And there's a sense of like, because they play God a lot of the time. And I think they're like, tell everybody what you said your surgeon friend plays when uh, he does surgery, because they all have different soundtracks when they, they play. They can play in the operating room. He plays Pitbull. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Wow. I know, Lizzie, how weird about that. What did you see when you, what did you think when you saw the dancing doctors and nurses? Wasn't it exciting? Well, first of all, I thought that was like a flash mob, how good they were. <laughs> but I'm happy that they're able to celebrate because it's just like, 
even though we're at the same time, and Dr. Coley said this earlier this week. We're I think we lost Lindsay for a second. It's either the song or Lindsay. It's either the song or Lindsay. You can't have both. All right. Well, uh, we will get back to Lindsay as soon as we possibly can. But yeah, it is good to see them releasing some energy and celebrating. It's yes. wonderful. Uh, speaking of a coronavirus, actor Kirk Cameron is protesting because he's not happy with the California governor's stay at home order. So the 50 year old Growing Pains star invited star. a large Stop It Al crowd of maskless people to peacefully protest outside of a mall in Los Angeles. They sang Christmas carols like jingle bells while packed close together here's what he had to say kirk about the protest these are constitutionally protected rights at this time at christmas to sing christmas songs to to, to gather to assemble and to sing about the birth of our savior i think we do have lindsay back i just want to get to lindsay on this do you think jesus would have worn a mask because i do <laughs> Sorry. That Lindsay. is such a question. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's such a, but I really think, listen, I'm not even against people getting together for Carol six feet apart, but why can't they wear a mask? Right. I think it's just super irritating that people are just so um, obnoxiously selfish that they don't understand that even if you decide that this is your free will, um, unfortunately, when I would tell people to do whatever you want to do, it's your life and you can ruin it if you like to, this actually affects other people yes. knowingly and unknowingly. Yes. So you might pass a grandma in a, in a grocery store or touch something that they touched and you could actually kill somebody. Yes. And so I just don't understand. Um, as much as I understand the Christmas spirit, I don't understand this type of gathering with no protection at all, no distance and no mask. Right, and like you can choose to have a cigarette, but I'm not choosing to get coronavirus. You're choosing to walk around maskless. Al, what did you think when you saw this? D uh, Lindsay, you said something earlier this week and it seems like you may have forgotten it. I don't have the energy for this anymore. Mm. I don't, Lindsay. You know what? People are just going to keep doing this, girl. It's, it's always comes back to this constitutional right. There's this weird thing yeah. where we deal with this every holiday season, this fake war on Christmas. Like, first of all, they, they call it Black Friday because that's when businesses get back in the black. Businesses depend on Christmas, okay? So, like, it's not going anywhere. But these false narratives about, you know, my constitutional right and my God-given right. You, Tori, just like you have a God-given right to smoke, but you don't have a God-given right to smoke in a restaurant restaurant like people don't push back on that they don't push back on parking spaces you should just pull up like grand theft auto park on the sidewalk go through the building it's you you're in a hurry <laughs> why are you waiting for red lights you're in a hurry it's you it's all about you so remember that when you're out today no rules don't just pick don't cherry pick one thing off of the off of the cafeteria tray no rules if you want to be a tough guy i want to see no stoplights no seat belts smoke if you want right in a baby's face have at it wow because apparently it's all about them and not about protecting the herd it's become an individual right issue which is interesting because safety seat belts also people protested against and it's just a public health issue you were nodding erica to, to what well, I yeah was because saying. it's not i think what people also need to understand is that yeah okay so you decided to go maskless so that was your first decision but what was your second because the stories that are coming out and again because I'm very familiar with all of these funerals that are happening right now are we were at a, a gathering where someone knew that they were sick and brought it in anyway someone knew that they could possibly have had the virus and brought it to everyone else so these are people who not only are just like these are my rights but it's also my right to Spread infect it. you yeah. it's like it's intentional at yeah. this point I agree with you I think Let it's intentional see. It is intentional. Okay. You you go out, you get sick, and then you go to other people and give it to them. That's murder. Like it is murder. If somebody if somebody dies because they contracted the coronavirus from you, you are a murderer. Wow. Live with that. Live with it. Wow. Let that land. Friday. <laughs> I why, feel it, Why though. did you have to ruin that moment? All right, we've got a couple of Christmas-themed viral videos for you. First up, a woman is awoken when an animal gets into her house and climbs into her Christmas tree in the middle of the night. At first, she thinks, oh, it's a cat. She uses a frying pan, as you see, to try to safely get it out. There's a good weapon. When that doesn't work, she turns to the spray bottle of vinegar. Finally, the animal <laughs> leaps free. You ready for this? <gasps> and chaos oh. ensues. What was it? Both no, animals are fine, but the raccoon. No. Oh, it was. Oh, no. Hell no. Here we go. Here we go. This, let me tell you, this was my worst nightmare when I got a real tree this year. I thought that there might be an animal inside of there. <laughs>
<laughs> Why did you think there was an animal inside of it, Lindsay? Why, well, Lindsay, why did you, th oh my God, is that the raccoon? On the chandelier. I'm, just, I'm sorry guys, I'm like stuck watching this video so closely. I thought that, that because I went to that outdoor space, you know, all the trees are out, outside. So I thought, you know, naturally animals live and there might be one in my apartment now. And Colin was like, you're crazy. And this proves my point, animals come to trees. That's terrifying. This woman is the bravest I've woman I know. I've never seen anything like that. What? It was on her chandelier. Okay, next up, check out this house in Houston, Texas. The homeowners had the Christmas lights synced up to some pretty cool tunes. Take a look. Hey, Mufasa. Hmm? Oh, my God. You better kill it. You better kill it. Running man. <laughs> Al, did you like that? That is, I love that. And it's so weird. That song probably came out 30 years ago, and it still, people still, hits. still it makes people dance. It it's a weird thing about that song. Well, it tells you to. It does. Tori just said it slaps, Erica. Is that You're not cool? even going. Oh. That's very cool. You used it correctly. I'm in shock. This song slaps. Okay, tell our Excuse audience what that me, means. I saw this video on Instagram yesterday, and it was to a different song, Juvenile, Back That Bleep Up. So Whoa. I don't know if I got confused or the person that posted it got confused. But I don't know who, what the real song was. Now I have to go find out. Okay, we will be checking with the booth on what the original song is. We have a dispute, I and there's a challenge. I don't think it matters. We will not be playing Juvenile on daytime TV. <laughs> I'm dead. That's just that's just that's my years of ex my my three years of expertise. <laughs> juvenile uh, will not be uh, discussed. All right, coming up on ZVL, opinionated sportscaster and friend of the show, me? Dale Hits. No, not you. Dale Hansen uh, gives his take on this very chaotic year. How do you think 2020 will go down in history? Plus, Connie Chung is dishing the dirt on some of her former colleagues, what she says about her time working with Barbara Walters and Dan Rather. Stay tuned. All I want for Christmas is you. Soldier Boy Tell. See yourself. Welcome back to DBL. Connie Chung 
isn't holding back about what it was like working with some high profile people. The former anchor recently dished the dirt on the Originals podcast with Andrew Goldman. Connie said Dan Rather, who was her co-anchor on CBS Evening, was, quote, very Texas gentlemanly, but added that she felt if she turned her back, she would be in the shower scene from the movie Psycho. Ooh. That is such a hard turn I didn't see coming. Meantime, Connie said working with Barbara Walters and Diane Sawyer at ABC was like Tanya Harding kneecapping Nancy Kerrigan. Take a look. When I got to ABC, both Diane and, and Barbara were in the same sort of arena of trying to get these big interviews. So when I tried to go after them, I was told I could not that Barbara and Diane were the only ones who could compete for the interview, and I had to stand down. And I said, really? <laughs> okay, so if you don't know, she is married to Maury Povich, so I like that she's kind of dishing just like Maury with the gossip. I actually went to Connie's house a couple of years for a Christmas party. She's a lovely woman. Oh, really? Lovely woman, beautiful house, yes. Lovely woman. What do you think about her dishing all this tea? I believe it. I know. I believe it. I mean, but the thing is, so it, I don't want to make this into a woman thing because I think it's a competition I thing. I agree with you. And especially at that time, there were only so many slots. But the idea that I can't stand when someone's told to, like, stand down, know your place. Like, if we're going to compete, let's compete. Yeah. Let's that all be on the same playing field. Blows my mind, but I believe it. Lindsay, what do you it. think? What do you think about it? Do you think it was at all too much? I no, I'm totally not surprised. I was actually the most surprised by um, David Letterman's personality off camera. She said that he's very just like antisocial. And but I actually can understand that because if you like are talking for a living, some people are very like to themselves yeah. and seem extroverted on TV or like we heard about Ellen this year, seems super fun on TV and then also seems like a tyrant to people that she employs. So who knows? I'm not surprised, though. Do you think Connie Chung's trying to make a comeback real quick, Al? No, I think when you're done with your career and you're, you're in a, that reflection, stage I think you feel comfortable Connie Chung's got more money than anybody could ever want she's had a great career and was a true pioneer and now she's like yeah now it's time for a little comeuppance I you guys did this and it's time for you to own this I think she's coming back I think we're seeing a comeback Connie comeback coming up on DBL <laughs> Dale Hampton who's gone viral for his takes on all kinds of topics is sharing his thoughts on 2020 you got to stick around to see if you agree or disagree with this opinion ladies
Welcome back. There's no doubt 2020 has been difficult for everyone, and there's really no better person than our friend Dale Hansen from WFAA to put this year into words. It's been a while since you've seen him on DBL, so we're very happy to welcome him back. He joins us from his home in Dallas. Here's Dale's DBL 2020 take. When historians in the future begin to write the story about the year 2020, I don't think they're going to look favorably upon America, and I don't think they'll look back fondly at the Americans who have lived through the year either. If this is not the worst year America has been through, it's on a very short list. We are such a divided country. It's not 1861 when the first shot was fired to start the Civil War, but we're a great deal closer to that than we have ever been since. We've been through a pandemic before. We've had race riots in our streets before. Our economy has collapsed before, and we have certainly had corrupt, incompetent, lying politicians in our nation's capital before. But when have we ever had them all in the same year like we have this year? It doesn't surprise me that more than 81 million Americans voted for Joe Biden wanting a change at the top. But it is incredibly surprising and disappointing to me that 74 million didn't. Those among us who claim to be the true patriots, the ones who love America more, don't believe anything about America. They don't believe the doctors and scientists who tell us to wear a mask. They don't believe the nurses who risk their lives trying to keep us alive. Even telling those nurses on their deathbeds as they're about to die, the virus is a hoax. More people have died from that hoax in South Dakota, a state of less than a million people than have died in South Korea a country of 51 million. Though so-called patriots don't believe in the FBI and our intelligence agencies anymore, and they don't believe in the people who count the votes, who's actually just a neighbor down the street volunteering to be a part of our democracy. I choose to think of it this way. 2,900 people died on 9-11. We take our shoes off at the airport now, and we can't take a bottle of water and a big tube of toothpaste through the gate either. And no one objects because it's to keep us all safe. But a mask? Well, let's kidnap a governor who would suggest such a thing, and yet we have a 9-11 in America two to three times a week now. If our parents and grandparents had behaved the way we do now during World War II, if that generation had made the same commitment and sacrifice that we do to win this war against the virus, we'd all be speaking German today. They would be disgusted if they could see what we have become, just like those historians will be when they write the story about the year 2020. There's an old saying that God will never give you more than you can handle. But when I look back at this year, it's not because she didn't try. Wow, okay, okay. I have often thought about, and I want to get to everyone here, the history of the 2020. And when you think of World War I, World War II, the sacrifices people made of rationing food, electricity, saving their uh, silks to make parachutes for people to jump out of planes. We all sacrificed on the line that greatest generation, and now we can't be patriotic enough to wear a mask. I am so uh, 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 on board with exactly what Dale said. Lindsay, did you think there was anything you didn't agree with? What did you think? Yeah, because I'm actually inspired by how many people came together um, di for different huge companies like airlines have come together to tell everybody to wear a mask and even come together um, for racial justice in certain ways and helped us progress forward. But at the same time, when we think about the people who turned a blind eye to either the Black Lives Matter movement or completely turned a blind eye to everything that's going on with coronavirus, then I'm very disappointed about um, where we are and not even wearing their masks. It's like little things you're asked to do, just like care about somebody else right. um, was a fail this year for some people and that to me is disturbing i bet well, all of our grandparents or great-grandparents would be like they can't even sacrifice that much don't you agree uh, yeah i do but i think you use the word patriotism but i think the people not wearing masks think that they're being patriotic. i agree with you and i think that's the difference is like we have different you. definitions for the same thing i hope we can get back together again we'll be right back
To DBL. Whether you're driving near or far for the holidays, it's important to be prepared for whatever winter throws at you. We're chatting about winter car essentials on today's DBL Drive, sponsored by CarShield. First, windshield fluid. It's not only keeping your windshield clear of salt, dirt, and grime, but also it prevents any fluids from freezing on the glass. Second, a power tire inflator. A sudden temperature drop can cause your tires to leak. Make sure you have an inflator on the go. That has happened to me so many it, times. Yeah, I didn't realize when it gets freezing like that, they just like, it almost shrinks. And lastly, don't uh, most people don't think about this, uh, but have a double or triple car charger and make sure all your devices are fully charged in case of an emergency. When it comes to driving, for peace of mind, get an auto protection plan with CarShield. CarShield protects their members from the high costs of auto repairs, so call one 800 505-9619 for a free quote. I just want to get back really quick to the raccoon video. <laughs> I just want to see that again. Can we play that raccoon video again? There's the raccoon. <laughs> that is amazing. Lindsay's laughing so hard. Look at it's like Andy Indiana from Jones. The chandelier. Oh <laughs> no! Hell no! Okay. Oh, it fell. It fell. That's a nightmare. Oh, I'm my. sorry. That's a nightmare. That's a ni oh my! <laughs> On the couch. Did she have on? an open door mm -mm. for it to go out of? Mm -mm. I would have been down the street. The <laughs> raccoon could have the house. <laughs> Yes. That's it. Yeah, so what is, that's like Jumanji. Get that out of here. That's it's a disaster. It's my worst nightmare. <laughs> the rhinos are coming. All right, no. DBL is new every day. We will see you Monday, same time, same place. Bye, guys. <laughs>